Good morning. The uh, weather this morning really is a uh, challenge to most of us. This is a sure sign of climate change. Um, well, uh, it's my pleasure this morning to uh, welcome our distinguished lecturer, Professor Yan. This is the third time, third day on campus, uh, and we have been working him very hard. So uh, after today's session, uh, hopefully he will get a bit of rest and then catch a flight to Beijing. Now, but if you hope before he does that, uh, he will be here this morning all the way to lunchtime and uh, he expects to receive quite a number of challenging questions from you because I mentioned to him this morning that uh, most of those who registered to come to this talk are from the private sector, which is a good thing. Now, now uh, just briefly, uh, Professor Yan's topic this morning is to look at the regional bioenergy system uh, for increasing renewable energy utilization and mitigating climate change. Uh, the presentation this morning fits in with the work plan and objectives of the Energy Studies Institute. Uh, I haven't done this in the last two days, but I thought this morning I should take a bit of time to introduce a little bit about what the Energy Studies Institute is all about. Uh, in a nutshell, the Energy Studies Institute, or ESI for short, is an autonomous research institute focusing on energy policy established within the University of Singapore, NUS. And there are three focus thrust areas. The first is energy economics. The second is energy security. And the third is energy and the environment. And these three areas are very uh, so-called interdependent and not only does ESI uh, holistically pursue uh, interest research areas in this so-called multidisciplinary mix we are taking uh, so-called uh, special interest in drawing in uh, those in the private sector who may have interest in one or more of these three topics or thrust areas. And so therefore, uh, you, your presence here this morning really uh, supports our so-called belief that the interest on energy is growing among the private sector. And the topic this morning by energy uh, is very special. And in fact that many of you among us today are from the private sector just shows that there is a growing interest in our private industry uh, to look into this question of biomass, bioenergy production. Now, the Energy Studies Institute is going to organize a huge conference in November. And some, if not all of you, would have received a flyer or information through our email. Or you could come into our website and look at the so-called um, descriptions uh, of the various activities that we are going to organize and also organizing with other parties in Singapore in the first week of November. So in that week, there will be several seminars, workshops, conferences. And if you, if you register in the Singapore Energy Conference, you will get access to all these various streams of presentations and gatherings. Plus, by registering in one conference, you will get a chance to come to dinner every evening of the week. So I hope that would be something that you can look forward to, and I really do look forward to meeting you in the early part of November. Now, okay, so now I think uh, it's, we're quite ready to, to um, I'm quite ready at least to see the floor to Professor Yan, but first let me say that uh, 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 Professor Yan is Chair Professor of Energy Engineering at the Royal Institute of Technology in Sweden and also the, the Maladon University in Sweden. Now, he hailed from uh, China, arrived in Sweden in 1989, and he received his PhD at KTH uh, Stockholm. 
1991. Now, um, during 2001 to 2005, um, Dr. Yan was chair professor and head of energy engineering at the Lulia University of Technology in Sweden. Professor Yan uh, is well known uh, as editor-in-chief of the international journal called Applied Energy, which is published by Elsevier. He uh, participates actively in many conferences. Um, coming in the next 12 months, Professor Yan will chair um, and co-chair uh, several conferences, of which the most interesting one is on uh, green energy in Beijing. And then um, early next year, the International Conference on Applied Energy in Hong Kong. So if you have the time to visit Hong Kong and uh, Beijing, uh, I'm sure you'll enjoy uh, participating in these two conferences. If you need more information, please come forward and let me know. Um, Professor Yan is also um, an overseas assessor of the Chinese Academy of Sciences, a roster expert to the UN uh, FCC uh, uh, committee, and an advisory expert to Asia Development Bank and other international organizations. So we are particularly pleased, pleased to welcome Professor Yan to the Faculty of Engineering, to NUS, and to ESI. And uh, it, it, it takes it, it is now my pleasure to welcome uh, Professor Yan and invite him to give us this lecture. Thank you very much. Thank you again for the uh, for the introduction, and uh, it's really nice to, to be here. Uh, yeah, we had a lot of discussion and uh, all last two days, and uh, and today it might be uh, what, what I'm going to talk about is the bioenergy system, and uh, we had a lot of uh, research and development regarding the detailed technology. But, but today is more we focus on the the energy systems rather than the detailed technology. And the, the in the title is uh, obviously you can see the what's the the driving force is uh, renewable energy utilization and the mitig mitigation the, of the climate change. Uh, it's very interesting uh, today. I, I have breakfast and uh, I saw this uh, this uh, you you may say. You might have seen the newspaper today. They say put eco back to the economics. And yesterday we had been a discussion with Professor Do about the engineer, engineer or engineering. So it's quite interesting. Regarding, I never pay attention to the economics. Actually, start with the eco. And uh, basically today, uh, what, what I can say is the energy system at the same time is the ecological system, and. Uh, which you have to consider both energy and resource and also environmental impacts. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about the driving force for the RD and the, on the renew, uh, bioenergy system, what behind that, especially for the Swedish case, and what we have done with the, uh, the regional energy or the bioenergy system, why we put those together. Uh, look at the, the energy system, why it's the has to link to the bioenergy system, not other uh, renewable energy. And uh, a main reason for, for what we, we focus on the research is the uh, supply and demand by energy systems and uh, how to integrate with agriculture and the forest uh, industry and what's the key technology we are developing uh, regarding the bioenergy conversion system, uh, con conversion technologies. And uh, th what's the new in the uh, bioenergy system? What's the you know, witty stuff uh, in related to such a uh, uh, study? 
which is including how we in basically integration is keywords, integration with agriculture and forest with bioenergy system, and uh, integrate with uh, bioenergy system with CO2 capture and storage, which I have uh, talked a little bit uh, during the, the day before yesterday. And uh, and how we integrate with uh, the bioenergy system with uh, the energy application and use, which is linked to the mainly for the trans transportation sector. And uh, now I will give you a little bit about the research and development, what uh, in my group has been involved in the KTH, uh, the Royal Institute of Technology and uh, Melanoni University, to give you a little bit, might be for someone you are interested in, which I, I couldn't talk with uh, within the topics. Uh, this has been shown the third time, the day before yesterday and yesterday and today. So it more like it gives the people who haven't, might be not in uh, in the seminar for the first day, so why we, we're working on those topics. And you can find this, the, uh, we're working basically all three major uh, measures, which is including the energy efficiency and uh, renewable energy and uh, self capture and storage. Uh, the background basically is a constraint of the uh, climate change for the future. And uh, this is a scenario for the, if you want to reach the target with the two degree target. And that's uh, what you need to do and with different measures with the so-called least cost uh, uh, options. The driving force for the bioenergy system and uh, first is the climate change. And the reason because uh, uh, EU transport sectors is like is responsible for 13% of the, the total energy consumption. That's also linked to the energy security, as uh, we mentioned. Uh, Professor so mentioned about the early in the regarding the uh, ESI, the ta task I think is very important, and and also include the biodiversity. And the, in the future, that's a more challenging for the climate change because uh, if we're talking power generation. You may have the uh, if you're going to implement a C CCS CO2 capture and storage. That means you can capture uh, CO2. But for the transport sector, almost uh, it's uh, too small to capture the CO2 or it's too high cost. And how to solve this kind of problem? And there are a lot of different solutions. Uh, you, you may use a, a hybrid plug-in and some other option and hydrogen economy and and bioenergy. A uh, biofuel is one of the options, and uh, Sweden has chosen this uh, this as the, the major option for to how to mitigate the CO2 in related to the uh, transport sector. And uh, another thing which has been not so much discussion about is the new business for the agriculture, and there is a lot of uh, de debate and discussion regarding the is new business or new threat to the. Uh, agriculture uh, sector because uh, a lot of discussion you may have saw the uh, news or newspaper and uh, times there's in March there's one article regarding the biofuel and a lot of discussion about the food price and, uh, and the biofuel if it is food price because of the biofuel uh, there are many discussions for those so that's the uh, major driving force for why uh, by energy uh, system is become very important. As I mentioned, the, what we are doing is uh, just more like so. Uh, our main areas is uh, we're working with uh, mainly working with, with technology development, and then we we go up to the technology system integration. Then you even have the larger system. So that's uh, basically what we are doing. And uh, then y you can from the left side you can find is the. Uh, the end results, that's uh, our feedstock. And also we need to think about the sustainability. Basically, you have to think about the environment and the ecological system, and even social aspects that uh, might be linked to the so-called non-energy related to the security or something. Or And uh, then it's, uh, we, we need to look at the, the impacts. That's for the outside, uh, the, the left side. And then you, you need to look at what technology innovation you are going to introduce and what's the impact to the decision making and uh, what's linked to the future strategic planning and also the what's new business uh, you can develop through the, such. Uh, that's uh, what uh, 
what we are doing and what uh, what outcome. And one example I show you here what uh, what we are doing, what we are not do, doing is uh, uh, you can find uh, that's the university and industry. And we really working very close with the industry. That's, uh, I think that's one of the research we have been uh, always emphasized in Sweden. You have to work with the industry. And uh, the funding is very, is most of our funding is like that. Is, uh, if you can co-funding from the industry and the uh, government will match uh, another 15%. So our research, for example, like uh, our university, which is a uh, uh, quite unique part in our group, is uh, in the uh, what we call the PRU, uh, is the process uh, and the resource optimization, which including not only energy part and also the automation and uh, control, uh, such an uh, integrated uh, one we call the profile of our university. And we have the industry funding from the utilizing company and the municipal uh, uh, this kind of public companies, and we've working together with long like five years uh, uh, program. They give us funding for the very stable. Every five years we re review the uh, the program and make the the new uh, new collaboration agreement. So this is basically that's some example which shows what we have been working together, uh, like ABV, which is uh, uh, automation and uh, and uh, it was a power, in a power generation company too. And uh, then we have the, the government, you can see the Swedish energy agency, which is the, the major funding resource for us. And then we have some utility company. For and all those around is uh, our neighbor, like uh, all the close to the, the what's called, we call it commune or community. Basically, this is a municipal uh, city or uh, the community which is supplies energy locally for each uh, community. That's the utility company. And then we have the, s the local city, and then the, the, the Vatican is the largest uh, uh, utility company, the national. Uh, so the, we're working together, and then basically this is the, our major area. We're working with the, the original ideas, and then make the fundamental study and apply the research. But for those commercialization and the products, basically we're working together with industry, but it's not our main focus. And uh, rather than the industry, try to uh, develop the products. And uh, we are talking about the by energy system, and what's the difference between the conventional energy system? And I, I would say that that's uh, if it looks the general is the same, and it's the major difference is if it looks the products is. Uh, Electricity, heat, and fuels, just uh, what we're looking at. And uh, from feedstock, the, the general energy system, you have the multiple uh, fuel, uh, feedstock. But here we have a little bit different. It's uh, linked to the forest residues, agricultural residues, and energy crops, which is the dedicated energy crops. It might be not uh, uh, might be not so relevant to the Singapore because uh, basically it's linked to land use. And that's a little bit different compared to the general uh, energy system. Then you, if it looks, this it become more complicated than the, the generic energy system because uh, you have to deal with, uh, basically you have to deal with the uh, original energy, uh, what kind of energy in demand and supply with uh, like a traditional energy system. And uh, you have to work in with some other sectors like uh, agriculture and forest, and which is uh, it's quite important. And then you have to deal with the land use. If this is the uh, biomass, is uh, not just uh, you can get, it's, uh, it's, it's a plant oriented. It's because then you have to uh, deal with the land use. So it's, uh, it's more complicated than the, than the, than the normal like the uh, energy system. And uh, why Sweden choose bioenergy as the high priority for the Swedish energy system? The main reason because uh, Sweden basically there are no energy resource except uh, hydro hydropower uh, hydro uh, like uh, the hydropower is uh, one of the but the resource has been more or less uh, we don't see any more potential it's uh, there's the economical potential or the resource potential but now there are no ecological potential basically you have no uh, chance to have more 
hydropower for the energy supply. And there are no coal, no oil, no natural gas, and uh, uh, no others. And uh, they have the electricity production right now is uh, roughly uh, half of from the hydropower, half from nuclear. And that Sweden has made a decision a long time ago during the 1980s to phase out nuclear. And that is another 15% of what we can do. If uh, you need addition of 15% of the electricity, that's the original way why we look at the bioenergy system. The new challenge linked to the, as I mentioned, about transport uh, sector for the CO2 and uh, uh, the emissions. And increase, that part is the increase, how to mitigate. That's why the, they look at the bioenergy, because the Sweden basically covered the major the land has been covered by the forest. Forest is one of the major industry. And that's why uh, we, we made a lot of study, look at the, the potential resource. It's not to cut the tree and use it directly. It's rather than the residues from the forest industry, uh, including the paper mills and the, and the sawdust and some other. Those it has a great potential which can be used for the electricity production and also biofuels. That's why they look uh, this is very, very important uh, for Swedish energy, which is including the energy security and also the sustainable development. Then they, they what's the measure they have used the incentive is basically Sweden has used a green certificate to promote the renewable energy. So far it's mainly like I think they get a lot of benefits through the uh, combined heat and power co-generation used by mass. And uh, then high energy and the carbon tax, which maybe Sweden is one of the first to introduce the carbon tax. And the bioenergy for the, the sustainable future energy system. And this is uh, like the only local resource. And that is uh, the former government has made a uh, decision to ha like keep Sweden like uh, in 2020 to fossil free society. Which is uh, we 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 have a lot of, a lot of discussion about uh, how we can keep uh, fossil free. Uh, basically, the major challenge is the transport sector, because the electricity basically now is more or less uh, fossil free. And another challenge for the steel mill is because they still need to use the coal as the the energy and and also for the production process. And this shows uh, the energy total energy supply and utilization in Sweden. Uh, it's not very, it's not very clear. I wonder if I have, if I could find the puncture. Yeah, I, I use this one, and uh, you you can find this is the results. And uh, here you have crude oil, and uh, uh, basically this is imported from the uh, mainly from the North Sea. Because Sweden has switched from the nineteen seventies to the uh, it was from the meat. Middle East, and then because the energy security, right now they they import a little bit higher price, but to to secure the energy supply, but mainly from the North Sea. And this part is very interesting. It's a biofuel, biomass, and the peat. And peat is a little bit. Uh, 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 it has been including the in as the bioenergy, but not internationally. There are a lot of discussion about that. And the hydropower, and the nuclear. So this is the uh, mainly energy supply. And the energy use and as the uh, that's more like you convert to the energy carrier, and you have the uh, crude oil and uh, and uh, biofuels. And let's see, this is the electricity and district heating. If this is a little bit special in in Sweden because it's uh, you know cold climate, and uh, we need a lot of the. Uh, uh, heat, uh, heating uh, during the winter and even during the May, and some some place it might be a whole year you need uh, uh, the heating. Uh, uh, he, he, there's a heating demand, and then what's the, the, the like uh, the utilization and the, in the three different sectors, and uh, that's uh, that's industry, and that's uh, transport, and that's uh, residential and the domestic uh, use. So it's. Uh, then you can find uh, this part is really um, that's the resource uh, mainly used for the transport, and the other is mixed with different kind of energy resources. And uh, then you can find the biomass has been 
used for the industry and also district heating, mainly this part. Uh, it's a very important uh, contribution. And if you look at the biofuel use uh, and, the, and the production in Sweden, uh, the biofuel have been used mainly, you have the breakdown of the, you can find that that's a pop industry. It's a majority of the uh, biofuel, uh, biomass has been used in that. That's why we I mentioned about we're working a lot with the pulp paper industry. And saw mills and this heating is a, is a lot of biomass has been used for that. And that's why it's a, Talking biomass use roughly six, 16 percent Sweden in the whole energy mix, and but the majority has been used for the the heating and the, the industry. And then if you look at the, the production, where it comes from, again it's the, you say it's the pop industry is a major uh, contribution to the biofuel. That's why we have been working very intensively with the, the pop paper mills. And the carbon emission in Sweden is. Uh, uh, if you can look at that's, if it's, that's 1990 and come to here, we do have the reduction rather than increase. Even the Kyoto Protocol has uh, allowed Sweden to increase 4%. So, so we have internal government target with uh, minus 4%. And uh, it's not very challenging. To, but one part, if you look at the transport, other is reduced, but the transport sector is uh, more like a, a little bit increase. So that's why, and uh, it's a very challenging for Sweden if uh, we are talking about two, 2020 going to fossil free, and this part, how, how can you manage it to get fossil free? Basically now it's uh, really heavy uh, fossil based. And uh, then it's, uh, we're talking about tax, and in Sweden it's, uh, you know, it's uh, one of the world that might be number one. They claim last year they are happy they have become number two of the uh, tax, uh, highest tax uh, paid country. and. Uh, Denmark become number one, and Sweden become number one. It's very much you now. It has been kept over a uh, long time as uh, number one. And uh, the energy is same. The, we have a very heavy tax for the f fossil fuels. Uh, I give the one example like coal, and uh, then you look at the forest uh, fuels. Uh, basically, this is the forest residues. And you can find it's cheaper, uh, biomass is cheaper than coal. But it's not because the market price. And that's because the the tax you have very heavy tax have to be put on, and all tax those is the industry they don't pay the VAT as a consumer, uh, individual consumer we pay the all tax based on the the all sum of the and we pay an additional 25 percent of the tax. That's why my electricity bill roughly more than 70 percent is a tax, and roughly 13 14 percent is the real energy cost. And, but that has been one of the driving forces which has um, shaped for the Swedish energy change to be more green. And this is the one like uh, energy utilization you, you can find from the during the 1970s. It's uh, very like it's uh, oil uh, based. And then start to introduce the nuclear. So the another 15% has been and re replaced by the nuclear power and including the the increased demand from the energy uh, use. And then the, you, you can really find oil production has been reduced. Natural gas is very little uh, still discussion if it's going to have the pipeline uh, or not. And uh, the coal is, uh, is really not so much. And the biofuel has been increased. Yeah. And then some uh, hydropower you, you, you can find is uh, it's increased a little bit, but keep more or less stable. And you have, you can find here, there's a little bit of one decrease. That's two reactor has been shut down, and that's uh, more like commitment for the phase out the nuclear. And but that process had been delayed, and uh, so far there's less discussion about phase out nuclear, and because climate change pressure and might, uh, I really don't know. It's a, uh, I I don't believe it's in short time. Sweden will consider nuclear, but it might be this phase out strategy will be changed. And then, if it looks at the industry and the really even uh, more trends, you can show that the oil has been used much less, and then the electricity and the biofuel has been increased. And if it looks the, that's 2006, really not uh, the fossil fuel has been dramatically reduced. 
And uh, for district heating, that's uh, even more. You, you can find the biofuel has played a very important role. And uh, then you, say you, you can find the oil products have been dramatically reduced. And uh, we, we still continue discussing with our industry to face out even have very little oil in, in their uh, utility uh, company for the energy production. And then the black liquor, we're talking about a lot of black liquor, the potential, and this is uh, basically the world uh, potential. Uh, it's a uh, majority in the United States and, and uh, Europe and also Asia a little bit. And uh, there's the one, DOE has a very big project working, trying to work on the black liquor classification, which uh, they consider to use uh, Swedish technology. Yeah, basically, right now, there are two technologies I mentioned in the first day. ABB and the technology and uh, Cambridge technology, which has been implemented both in Sweden and uh, and the U.S. And there are lots of discussion right now with the uh, U.S. DOE about the project for the uh, black liquor gasification. And so it's a, that's the one of the parts uh, in Sweden is the largest uh, biomass uh, in, in terms of bioenergy and uh, import. And uh, I mentioned about the uh, the, t the whole nation has been changed from the fossil based, oil based, and to the uh, electricity and the biofuels. That's a, I show you one of the coal generation plant. Is uh, this is in Xiaoping Energy, and uh, Professor Cho, I think you have visited uh, that plant during the last year's conference, and uh, uh, you can really find that this is a that's the IPG, and they have been start to reduce a lot and then start to increase and if it looks the green part it's a biofuel and nowadays it's really like the if the pellets is in fact it's by biomass it's biofuel too and really like the this is the one utilizing comp uh, company really shift from the oil to the uh, to the uh, bi biomass bioenergy but it's you know this is a company not uh, not the government and not the other uh, they are doing this not uh, because uh, they want to do something good, only good. Of course, they want to do the, but it's, uh, it's the economy is really important, and uh, basically they want to make money. And uh, then I show you this is not match directly. It's another melandonia uh, uh, energy. It's uh, if I don't have data for the energy, but uh, it's about the same. It was so close. That's another that which we have uh, I get from the one of the keynotes. Uh, during the last year's conference, the here the shows data, the profit. If you look the the red uh, figures, then you, you you can really find that the the it's lost money. Even the turnover is uh, always increased. The reason because uh, the tax and the incentive and all changed, and that makes the industry start to respond how to let them to make money. Basically, this switch from the uh, oil based to the bare mass. This is uh, really, ch you can see the pattern. Uh, and then again, we're talking about, uh, usually we're talking about, for example, the newspaper talking about the economics and talking about growth and talking about uh, uh, we should have a uh, considered environment but not uh, slow down our economic uh, growth. But the, 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 the question is how you measure that. This basically uh, it really shows, like, I think they pay more, but it really safe to depend on what kind of incentive, what kind of instrument you, you, you introduce as a nation or, or, or the, as the, the region. So that really shows that how uh, the company business can be closely linked to the, the energy use and also the, the incentive what has been uh, used in the, in the country. And what we are talking about the biomass energy system is uh, basically in Sweden we're talking about the those industry, pot paper and board industry, and uh, this is uh, uh, all the forest and the sawmills. This is a major forest-based industry, and that's the system you can say is the from the wood until the the service to society, and uh, the major products is the pulp, uh, for the paper products and uh, some you can find others like uh, wood and uh, all this is a traditional uh, product based service and but what we are looking at uh, in addition to that the byproducts like energy and some other 
if that can be integrated. And that's the one project we have uh, worked more than 10 years. We started with a very big project together with the, the Power Paper Research Institute and some others uh, integrated together. And they look at the production improvement and we look at the energy system. And then we match together to look at if that's possible to implement. And our results for them, like the Power Paper industry, basically they can convert from the energy demanded industry to be energy surplus. That means they can use commercial technology today and change to be make them more efficient and uh, integrate with the, uh, in fact they can supply energy rather than use the uh, imported uh, electricity or some other energy resource. And uh, another is uh, that the uh, energy, by energy is uh, from the energy crops. And this is the more like uh, we call the dedicated energy uh, crops which uh, you do the plantation for the energy purpose. And that's the uh, one place we, we have a so-called, this is really they have uh, implemented basically the Velo based uh, plant is a consolidate. And that has been used in Sweden for many years, and which is a quite a pioneer uh, development in Sweden. Uh, you can, those kind of energy crops, you can make a plantation roughly after four years, then you can cut every year, just like a, here it shows the plantation, and here shows the harvest. And you do the plantation, then you can every year you can do the ha uh, harvest. And uh, it's uh, it's very successful. In fact, if you drive from Stockholm to uh, my another university on the road, you can find uh, many of those kind of plantation, uh, which has been used. And of course, there are some other crops you can use, like including the rap seed, and that's for most of the. There are many things we do, but Sweden has been working a lot with the uh, solids and how we use them, and uh, that's uh, uh, also linked to the climate and also the land which we are doing in Sweden. And it's uh, it's very interesting, and those is not only for the energy. I will give you an example, some other like uh, for the water treatment and the recycle of the uh, the elements and the material for regarding the soil improvement. And uh, here it shows like uh, the what has been changed uh, for the end product, what's those energy crops we're going to use and, uh, and also uh, including the forest residues and uh, agricultural residues. Basically right now it's more focused on biofuel development. And that's changed, what has been changed in Europe since 1993. And now there are a lot of discussion about uh, if they should be, it shouldn't be so quick because uh, food price and so, but I have another uh, I'm not uh, totally convinced with uh, the food price linked to the biofuels. It, it basically, I feel that the oil price is uh, more linked to the food price. In fact, I have some figure, we, we had uh, some debates regarding the food price, because uh, biofuel is new, it's not very old. And uh, if you look at the food price in 1970s, it's much higher than today. I mean, the relative uh, value of the it's much more expensive. But during that time, we have no biofuel uh, development and those kind of issues. And then if you look at the, uh, almost from the food price peak, it's uh, re very close link to the, the oil price peak. That's the correlation is matched perfectly. And then it's another argument, they, they have, we have some debate, they said it's, uh, because uh, they use corn, for that, that's uh, mainly US. Uh, use corn as the feedstock, and because the corn price has will be increased because demand, and then if the corn price uh, increases, then they shift the land use. Many farmers to do the plantation for the corn rather than rice and wheat because uh, now I find that the, if it looks the history data, uh, rice price has been increased, wheat price has been increased much more than corn. So that's uh, gives the uh, one reason why. If the biofuel, if we talk about the really good food as a biofuel feedstock, corn has been used. But why if corn price is uh, the increase is lower than the f rice and the wheat? But they uh, put the argument because the, the farmer shift the, uh, from the uh, plantation for the corn, uh, for the rice to the corn. Now my question is because we're working with the agriculture and land use. The land is not prepared to use, you can grow anything on the land. We know the rice, uh, basically you cannot grow <laughs> rice in 
with the land used for the corn. But this is the argument some, sometimes is not, uh, not very relevant. Of course, it's a detailed study, really need to be careful, but I feel the medium has put this uh, uh, as a, like two years ago, this very positive for the biofuels. Nowadays, it was the price has been increased, and the start to report the back has put the report. I think they, they, they are talking about because they, the property uh, reduction is high priority than the food is high priority than energy, in fact. Then, of, of course, they, they are talking about you feel the p human beings or you feel the, your cars. It's a lot of argument, which is uh, if you just say directly, oh, that's uh, somehow is correct, but uh, the, the relevant and how the biofuel price linked to the food price. I think it's really scientifically study really need to be careful. The Times has published one article in March and uh, I read it carefully. I really couldn't find the scientific evidence rather than just talk, oh this guy has been mentioned that. And then you put all the bad story into together one paper and then this has been spread out, and uh, most people, they, we don't have time to really look very details. But if it looks relevant, I think this is a, uh, sometimes we really need a careful study for, this, the, for those kind of biofuel food price. Uh, if we are talking about biofuel, I would just add some few words. And uh, now we're back to the, what our study, what we are doing, the objective for the regional bioenergy system. As mentioned, that and uh, we're working with the technology, but it's not uh, the original target is to try to so called fossil free Stockholm region. This relates to the a little bit of looks like a little bit of dream, and but the dream really because uh, the, our former government had put like uh, 2020, we want to have the fossil free for the whole Sweden. Then we make case study for the Stockholm region if that's possible. And uh, then it's, uh, you need to look the social end. Uh, and institutional impacts. And we work mainly for the technology system component. But all those issues we need to address. And those, that's also sometimes when I talk about that, they, they, ask, uh, they ask me, what are you doing? You are the engineer, why you have to, you're working as some others. But uh, I, I, my answer is because almost like we do the bottom up, those issues we have to address. And basically the, we got money from government and we need to, it's our client, they have demand such a kind of service we have to give and that's what we are doing and then we're working on the again to reduce the greenhouse gas emissions this is the one of the target and new business and also the our major focus the, the innovative technology what we can do uh, for the technology development uh, that's one example we call the melon melon dollar region in fact including Stockholm because uh, the melon this is uh, this uh, lake the lake which has been, uh, in fact, is uh, connected to the sea. It's uh, one region with uh, roughly two million people, uh, which is the largest region in Sweden, because uh, basically because uh, we have Stockholm here. And, uh, but we, we, so we, we cannot cover from the start with the very big, then we try to uh, start with a little bit uh, close region, which is uh, connected to the uh, inscription and the solar energy. This is the way we start from those two community and then we extend the larger region that's the our uh, what we call the regional bioenergy system and that's the, the methodology what we have developed in fact this is the I developed for the ADB project for the for the China bioenergy roadmap and we use this almost uh, made some changes for our regional energy system and we need to look at the biomass resource and uh, what can be supplied and we look at different kind of technology and then you need to do the cost benefit analysis to see what's the econ economy in the system and you need to make the environmental assessment and also social impact analysis what's the and then we try to develop the regional bioenergy roadmap let's say when you can reach what and uh, then we, we need to find how much money you need to invest for the financial and the investment framework and uh, then the, what the future strategy for the region you can you can develop, and during that you need to have a lot of data collection, the interview and field study, which we carry out by the, our students, and also we have a lot of the consultation with the government, industry, and the, 
and uh, like farmer is very important, and also the invest investors because uh, where the money come from. So that's the uh, basic the framework. We, and the task has been we, we are right now doing like uh, uh, as mentioned for the, this Stockholm region and focused on the biomass and the energy technology. And then we divide into the subsystem, including the biomass resource. Right now, I have uh, two students working on the block. The what's the region? What's the energy demand? What's the resource we have? What how much land we have? And then there is another student working on the technology pathway. He is doing the simulation of the conversion technology, and which is uh, what's the efficiency of different technology based on the region, uh, regional input data, and what's the cost. And so that's the one part, so-called, we, we do the subsystem system. Uh, and then, uh, uh, as mentioned, we, we make the technology and system analysis and optimization for the, and, uh, and also we try to find if there are any innovation for the new technology which can be applied in such a regional energy system. And then we, we do the demonstration in, for the near-term technology. That's uh, how we link to the, together with the industry. One of the, I think so, it would be the world largest uh, biomass gasification is working with Mela Energy. It's a 100 uh, megawatt uh, fuel import. Uh, we, we are just right now uh, working together to develop, do the feasibility study. I think this project will be going to start in soon. And uh, as I mentioned, that uh, the one stu uh, in fact, two students working on the data collection, we love the agricultural products, what's the existing agricultural products in the, in the region, and what's land use, what kind of uh, crop, crops they have growing, and what the, what's the, the, they are planning to do the, for the future. And the existing energy supply and the use, for example, we have uh, the data collection from the old petrol uh, gas station to get data from those and know the, how the region, uh, the, the energy for the transport use. For the electricity and the heat, it's very easy because uh, we can get all the data from the local authority and also the utility company. But for the transport, is a little bit complicated because, uh, for example, I live in Stockholm. I'm filling the gas in another region. But that has been you if we do the data collection, which is not in Stockholm rather than another, because uh, another place is cheaper than Stockholm. <laughs> that's, uh, that's the the mobile system is basically uh, a little bit, a lot of uh, data cor correlation, and how we going to do that? And then we do the system modeling, and we we do we make the simple modeling rather than complicated uh, modeling. We use a linear model like a GAMS uh, to to do the, the how looks the system, the regional system. Then we is, we look the potential for the future and how much land can be used for energy crops. Uh, basically, Sweden can be agriculture can be safe supplied in Sweden. It's a 2% uh, population of farmers. But uh, today, it's most of the food is imported because it's too expensive for them to to have. That's why so we have more land use in that sense. So for example, I do, uh, I'm working with China too. With, uh, this land use really very important issue for China because there are not so much land, but that's not the case in Sweden. And, uh, then we find, try to find this, what's the sustainable solution to the region. And I'm not going to uh, too detail about how we do the modeling of the, well right now we, I have one student working on this for the regional system using the, the simple uh, GAMS modeling. And uh, that's uh, for the, we, we haven't got results yet. This is uh, just to illustrate what we are going, uh, we have some more like different results we need to collect all the information for the region. And then you have a, uh, uh, supply distribution system, how you collect and come to the production site. And uh, the conversion technology, what kind of conversion technology you're going to use, and what products, energy products, and also the, of course you have losses. And then this site is demand site, what uh, kind of energy, and then we need to look at what's demand, if this can be matched. So this is the uh, the whole chain from the resource and the end products we are going to to study. And then it's uh, the technology possibly what type of technology. Uh, here is a little bit different. We look at the different technology. At the same time, we look at the some other issue, which is not technology, rather than behavior change, 
and uh, that's also linked to efficient improvement. That's uh, more like it from the demand side. Uh, if it's possible to educate people uh, to use less energy, use more bicycles and cars, for example, and that's uh, a lot of things that which has a, a lot of potential we can working on. And technology we have considered like various technology, which we're working together with uh, Vexcroft is a one of the demonstration project. Use various uh, organic, uh, uh, municipal organic and agricultural waste as the feedstock, and which is one of the EU demonstration project. It's very close to us. I think we have the plan to. I'm not sure you have you been there to. There we we had a one plan tour to this. Uh, uh, we use the biogas bus transport. It's uh, all our gas to the plant to see how the biogas has been produced. And uh, we look at both first and second generation ethanol production. And that has been working with another company in Xinjiang. Uh, that's a plant I have mentioned. And uh, we look at other uh, fields, which this is a link to the ABB. You, you can find uh, most of them we're working with the industry. And because the basic industry have different demand. Uh, for technology development, but we try to pull them together into our uh, regional energy system and combined heat and power that have been working all the uh, for a utility company. And then uh, it's just my research and we, we really try to look at the, what's the opportunity for the uh, CO2 capture and storage integrated with bioenergy energy system. Uh, here it shows like different kind of technology pathways and uh, what, what type technology can be used is uh, from the another paper basically it has good coverage of the uh, we look uh, that's the second uh, uh, let's say link node yeah, that's second generation of the for the uh, biofuels and you can different kind of uh, technology which we have really do the detailed study that's my PhD student working on the technology system simulation and uh, we do some experiment which is on site in the industry uh, I'm not going to to detail what's that. And that's for example, this is if it looks from feedstock, end products, and then it's a ge generic uh, system. You have different kind of technology and different kind of intermediate uh, products and end use. But we try to look at our system and then uh, take away those we are not interesting and look at what what we are most interesting. And for example, like we don't consider the lighting and rather heat, cooling, and uh, and transport. And those things can be used uh, in, into our system. And uh, uh, that's the picture which have been shown. Why I show it here is because uh, now I uh, give you one example of what we have been working on the insurance energy. And they shift from the, you can say, from the oil to the biomass, but how they did that. And that's the system what we have been looking at, not only the energy and also the to recycle for the some other substance, and that's the for example here you, you see the that's energy in production that's the insurance coal generation plant, and they do the plantation for the uh, like solids, and the, that's a secure supply for the biomass. As the energy system is very important because uh, uh, that's also we do the project for China because the uh, collection of the biomass is very important for the bio biomass power plant and they have a lot of problems with uh, right now because uh, originally if they don't have any power plants the almost biomass this agriculture waste has been just brewing on the field you may hear the story China has a problem with the, the plant cannot land because smoke of the, the field and now they ban you are not allowed to do that so basically biomass is waste but uh, when you build one power plant the price immediately increased and now it's the, all the biomass power plant they run it's a negative uh, economic value because they lost a lot of money because the uh, feedstock price has been increased but what uh, they have been done this uh, in Shopping is very interesting because uh, basically have a long term agreement with the farmer so strongly a lot of farmers uh, long term like 10 years agreement that's one another way is uh, they rent land from farmers and do the plantation for the, by themselves for the solids and those, that means secure their uh, fuel supply. Third, they offer the farmer to be stakeholder and to join the company to hold the, like some project, they are the stakeholder, that means it's their business rather than, that makes the, the feedstock much stable. 
And another thing is very interesting for the use of solids as the uh, water treatment because this utility company is not they un, they, they don't only produce electricity and heat. At the same time, they they respond for the the, re, the local uh, with water treatment. And this uh, solids are very good for us. The, this kind of the natural feature for the water treatment. And uh, and then they, they do the, even do the recycle for the all the elements because they have considered the, the regional uh, soil quality because the farmer really care about it. I have one student who is a part time of my student. He, he's, a, he's a farmer and he does ecological plantation and then really they have uh, considered how to keep the soil. It's not a lot only for 10 years and they talking about generations and so next generation they can still continue to keep the land which can be used for the agricultural production. So that's the uh, some material cycle in the, the this uh, insertion energy uh, plant which really recycles the ash into but it's some picture. Here this water treatment use solids and uh, then it shows uh, that's some kind of uh, picture shows that this is you have solids there and then you have water you can find the water treatment it is integrated with the, uh, the energy crops plantation and then this guy he is the CEO of the company <laughs> and that's the he's a very good friend of mine and he, he, he has been working very very close with us and uh, that's the solids you see it's very it's quite high and uh, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's roughly I think the two more than roughly three meters uh, uh, high, and uh, that's the presentation of the Sarix. Part of them they, they did by themselves, uh, and they working together with farmers. And then you can see this is the recycle of the ash for the soil improvement. You uh, this na natural process. That's the very complicated for the biomass. You they take something from the uh, from uh, from the land, and then it's some. That's why it's, uh, you you know the agriculture always you need to do the do the harvest. And then sometimes you need to leave the land to to rest, to keep the productivity. The reason because the nutrition, and that's the why. If when you have the introduce the energy, uh, convert the system into those kind of agricultural business the practice, sometimes you, you disturb the 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 natural cycle. That's why you have to return the some kind of elements into the back to the the, the land. That's the ash, uh, and here's uh, again the harvest of the the. The solids, and uh, then we are working with the very close with the, the the company and the how to improve them for today's system. Just a today's system, they have used solids for the water treatment and also supply the uh, heat and the electricity and even the cooling. Sometimes during summer, uh, they through the cooling, and then we they they are interesting for the future. It's not the future talking about uh, ten years later and even twenty years later. Uh, that's why I'm very happy for the old company. They are really look at the really long term solution. And uh, basically, there was so several reasons because this is the utility company supply the region. And they own the not, it's not, uh, it's not a private company. They own by the municipal government. So they have to keep the, the local society to be secured and the supply and also the, all the other environment issues they have to address. And that's a future system we try to look. Originally, this is the coal generation plant, and uh, they supply the heat and at the same time uh, the electricity. And what they are doing is because uh, this plant is uh, during the summer, you know, the, the <coughs> heating load will be lower. And what we are doing try to how to use uh, excess heat uh, to during the summer or some other way, which you have more heat can be available for produce the, either the pellets or the ethanol, this is called second generation. Then we try to integrate together with, uh, for example, the plantation of the dedicated energy crops, which they already do. And if that can, can be able to change from the combined heat and the power to be by refinery or the called poly generation, which is including the pellets and the biofuel or heat and the electricity. So that's the future system. What we are doing is really we look the the case and uh, do the system simulation for technology and also looks the uh, region what the uh, supply they can get. Uh, I have mentioned about this uh, technology innovation what we are work working on. This uh, really our core business is uh, 
for second generation ethno production technology development, and black liquor classification, and uh, the integration with uh, uh, I show this is one example. We look at some other utility company to work together, and by any system with CO2 capture and storage. And that's the one of the second generation of by ethno technology. It's not a, this is a demonstration project, not a, uh, not our. Uh, it's not in our university, it's a one national project, it's in North. That's my former university in Lulu. I was, in, I was working there in 2001 to 2005, which uh, we are the partner of this uh, bioethanol, uh, second generation bioethanol. This is uh, one technology which has been really paid attention to the, the whole world, what's the situation. I think the second generation is this project, is, uh, if successful or not, it will be very big impact to the world development. Uh, Sweden has this is one of the largest projects. Sweden has put a lot of money into this uh, demonstration project, and I think so a few hundred million has been spent for that already. And uh, we, we are still looking for uh, the results from that. So far, it's a pilot project, and uh, I think still a long way to go. But it's a ve very interesting. They they working on that, and uh, and then it's uh, some successful demonstration and commercialization already there. It's, uh, like a larger biomass uh, fluid as a bad combustion. This has been commercially uh, used very successfully in Sweden. It's uh, uh, for combined heat power. And uh, th we have uh, like 115 megawatts of this kind of biomass power plant. And biogas for the transportation has been used. And pallets application and the bioethanol for transport, that's more like first generation, has been used for commercialization. And I mentioned about this is one of the, my students. Uh, he's a farmer. He developed this biogas uh, uh, digester. He, that's his dream. He's, he said, everything I should produce in my land. He has roughly four, 45 hectares of the, the land, and his father has uh, roughly uh, additional 100 hectares. They, they get from the, the grandfather. And uh, he's doing like part of the land used for the totally ecological production used for the pr produced uh, basically make something which can be used for the land use for the fertilizer product uh, they grew some kind of other plant which use the land not for the pure like crops uh, then they have the wheat as the main uh, agriculture uh, products and what's his dream he said well, well it's, uh, right now we use we do the plantation for the only soil improvement but this can be used for the biogas which is a by uh, for this fermentation process uh, can be generate the fertilizer used for the land use. At the same time, can generate some fuel, like a biogas. He would like to convert those biogas into the diesel or the ethanol or some other or, or, or the or the uh, CH4, you know, the two for the tractor to use. Right now, he uses uh, still use diesel, but he feels this is the fossil based. Uh, he is very very. Uh, it's kind of person very, it's a farmer, but he really believes something they, they need to do it. Well, we have a lot of discussion if this is not really possible, but he wants to try. This uh, has been built, he spent a few million by himself to, to, to do this biogas. Uh, then we help him to get some funding from the Swedish energy agents. Right now we're working with uh, this uh, farmer-based uh, biogas uh, digestion with uh, the, the crops. And then uh, another, uh, we're working with together. That's not only energy; it's nutrition <coughs> for the for the region. Uh, this shows uh, very interesting because we're working with this so-called uh, wax craft with biogas uh, production, and same time they use fertilizer to improve the region and land nu uh, nutrition. That has been used very, very successful to improve the land uh, soil quality. And that's the wax craft, the process which the, I mentioned was one of the largest uh, uh, biogas demonstration projects in Sweden, which you have the, uh, all the different, uh, here you have the feedstock which come from the uh, agriculture <coughs> residues and uh, the local, regional, uh, organic waste from the municipal. We have, because in Sweden, we all the, uh, we, we sort all the uh, waste from the whole scope. And we pay the different fees. If you short the organic part also and some others, we have many boxes at home. And then you pay one fee. 
uh, if you want to just only sort out the organic and the rest, you pay another fee. It's higher. So you encourage people. You want to you you have extra work, but the, uh, you get low fee to for the all the waste uh, you have produced the uh, household. And all the organic has been transported to the, this, uh, for example, this uh, local place. And then here is also the wa with the water treatment and the integrate. That's why they have the biogas production. And that has been used. Uh, this is uh, the plant you have biogas digester. And that has been upgraded uh, from the biogas to the basically you can use as mixed with natural gas or some. And that's the the filling station which had been high pressure, the gas had been compressed, and uh, that's the. Uh, and uh, you, you don't see it here because it's, uh, it's, under, uh, it's underground uh, storage. And there's the, the, that's the filling station. And even uh, Sweden has been developed the uh, biogas uh, train which can be run. This is the developed, uh, with, uh, it's called Biogas Sweden, it's one company developed for that. And that has been running, basically the local city, we have the several biogas bus has running uh, around the city and they, they use the biogas. This the business has been growing very quickly recently. And they don't have the problem with food price and those kind of issues. It's, it's, uh, it, it's quite uh, positive right now. Of course, they get a lot of government subsidies. And another is for the pallets. And uh, it's uh, compressed, uh, basically it's uh, uh, makes, uh, for example, wood chips to be compressed with, with, with uh, high density, which can be transferred. This has been increased dramatically, mainly for the one purpose to reduce the oil uh, consumption for the fossil fuel based to the family, single family house. And uh, you can find it's not only you you working with the production part, you have to work with the infrastructure, because the consumer have to be easily to get those such a resource. And now we can buy the pallets anywhere in the petrol station. You personally, or you can just make a phone call. They can shift. This is a very typical, like you have production, and you, you make a phone call, and then you just they shift with one like container. Or it's similar like a gas. You're filling in your house, and there's a house usually. It's like it's an oil tank. You just put and then just transfer. You don't need to be any person at home. You just make a phone call, and it's very, and distribution, site almost you can you can find that it's already spread out the, the whole country and that's the not only the distribution and also the products and has been developed that's how the system and when you have a uh, infrastructure and then the for user easy to use as a household uh, like a pallet heat for heating purpose it's automatically you don't need to do anything for example this is the uh, distribution you're feeling you are then you have the storage and automatically even the temperature for example outside temperature go down and then the machine starts automatically starting you don't use the same as you use as the oil or natural gas or some other uh, electricity for the heating this is, has been developed very successfully and the negative co2 emission system i have mentioned that i'm not going to repeat and that's the fourth day and some other concept which is quite interesting for the uh, we are looking at it, but then haven't really got time to uh, for the storage, carbon storage, which can be integrated with charcoal as a fertilizer production. That's again come to link to the agriculture. Uh, such a charcoal has been used more than thousand years. And in Brazil, they found uh, like they have ten meters of charcoal, which has been used for the uh, uh, soil improvement. And uh, immediately you can see the production. They have a comparison with. Uh, uh, the, uh, with the productivity of the uh, agriculture uh, crops with different kind of land. Those have been used uh, more than a thousand years ago and uh, which uh, we, we now we have the climate change issue. It's very interesting because uh, basically we have used more like for the energy purpose. And then in biomass basically you can, you can try to have the less conversion for the energy purpose but at the same time you have the solid carbon charcoal which can be used as a storage at the same time improves soil improvement. And another concept is, uh, it has been uh, introduced, uh, how to integrate with the uh, power plant with uh, uh, fertilizer production. That uh, might link to the, what we have, we have discussed about uh, CO2 capture and the utilization, 
utilization. The here is in fact I was uh, that's exactly like how you use CO two from the power plant and how to integrate uh, uh, that's current situation you have the for the natural gas or coal fired plant and then you have power generation uh, you have CO two. In fact that's power plant and that's the uh, that's uh, the for for example the fertilizer uh, uh, production. Basically those can be integrated together. And if those the element of chemistry, it should work, but how practically it works, that's another issue. And if you integrate those together, that's a, exactly part of CO2 might be able to use. And you were talking about CO2 capture and start, uh, utilization, might be that's a uh, very interesting concept. And then it's uh, uh, one thing I, I mentioned about the charcoal and the, and the carbonate of the uh, the use uh, more like a solid carbon can be used at the same time for the soil improvement. And this is a combination not only in the climate change uh, mitigation and also the soil improvement. And this has been shown some kind of very good effect for soil improvement and also uh, get uh, reduce the, the water runoff. And that's, there are some other study has been made uh, which is, uh, we found this is quite interesting if it's uh, possible to integrate them together. Uh, Okay, let's see. Uh, oh, uh, my time is left. Yeah, I talk too much. I, I'll give you a quick uh, summary about uh, what we are doing. The bioenergy system is uh, one of the major tasks. Uh, I, I, I have al already mentioned about the, our regional system, and we do the, a lot of practice, like uh, moisture content measurement, uh, process linked to the feedstock uh, in the power plant, and the CO2 capture and storage, and the integration with the CO2. And, and some others, like uh, those, uh, how we're working together with the uh, our company. I already mentioned some of them and also our uh, company agency. Uh, I think I stop here. It's, uh, it's, I use too much time. It's, uh, hopefully I leave some time for your question. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Yang. Um, we have uh, a bit of time. Uh, uh, we now welcome questions from, from you. Just put up your hands and uh, walk to the mics uh, along the aisle there somewhere. Um, anybody? Uh, yes, Jeff. Uh, thanks very much, Professor Yan. Um, Jeff Hobart from NUS and ASTAR. Uh, recently, I've been reading a lot of information, a lot of research in relation to pyrolysis and the application to biomass which is produced and dis dispersed over a wide area. Uh, this is seen as a potential technology that could increase the overall efficiency of biomass conversion uh, to biofuels and energy. Do you have any comments on that? Is there any work being done in Sweden? Yes, uh, we have uh, two larger projects. One that are talking about the second generation of the ethanol production. That's the more like a, we call the uh, chemical process. And another is the thermal, uh, thermal chemical, which is uh, that's uh, included gasification and the paralysis. It's in another place which is called the vacuum. Uh, that's uh, one of the larger projects, which because the ba gasification basically is one of the uh, what we call the advanced uh, technology has been developed in Sweden, and uh, now it's uh, come to the. This is another uh, what is uh, another technology. Which we, we can convert the biofuels. We, we do the both, but I, I really don't, so far I couldn't say which one is better. And they're talking about also the uh, phototrophic uh, process and for the, for the biofuels. It's a lot of fun. right now. I, I, I couldn't say the what kind of uh, technology would be. In the future, I feel it's still in economics. And because so far, uh, second generation has been not put into commercialization. and. Uh, even some they claim they can produce very cheap, but uh, so you haven't seen it's the larger scale, and uh, and same for the, the this consumer chemical uh, the, process. The uh, particular report I read was about taking the technology to the source mm. of the biomass mm. and making these units mobile, yeah. uh, so that you can have aggregates of biomass over a smaller region coming mm. into a mobile plant, which right. then takes the product mm. to a more centralized fa uh, facility which could be more uh, efficient in you know, a dispersed biomass right. uh, agricultural system. Yeah, those, those systems, which if you look at the technology development, has been developed by Sweden and uh, Finland, VTT, and in, in fact China has been made a lot of this kind of simple uh, 
parallelizes for the village gas. Uh, but it's, uh, it, it's, they have some other, uh, it's low conversion uh, for, for those kind of simple technology. But since, of course it's cheaper. And, uh, but for the biofuel, it it's might be required more uh, than just simple uh, for the, the village gas. So this basically those kind of different kind of approach have been used. Uh, Finland had been, uh, been working a lot before, it's called fast uh, paralysis, uh, which is uh, before it's linked to the uh, combined heat and power, mm -hmm. but now they're safe to the uh, the biofuel. E EU going to have a new call for the. This is including the one of the technology had been considered. So far, I haven't seen the clear like commercial products which one will be which technology will be good. Okay. What we I think we can <laughs> we we do the same time. We're working with the gasification uh, this larger 100 megawatts. But not for the biofuel. That's for the power generation and the heat generation. So that's the we are not working directly with the, what you are mentioned about that. It's another university called the Wahoo University. Uh, another professor. If you, you are interested, I can try to get some information from him. Okay. We'll so talk afterwards. Thank you. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. Kui. Kui from A Star and NTU. <coughs> I was interested in your mention of the use of uh, biogas for transport. Uh, can you tell us a bit more about that uh, effort, and especially because we usually associate uh, biomass use in transport with bio liquid mm. biofuels rather than biogas. Yeah, right. So yeah. maybe you can tell us a bit more about that. Uh, yes, this is a project we have been working on. Let's see. If, uh, This is Vaku here. This is demonstration project we're working on the with the, you, you can say it's a 14,000 14, ton per year of the, the what we call the dry substance for the organic feedstock, which has been collected from the municipal and uh, really organic household organic waste and agricultural waste. That's the region of agriculture waste. That's feedstock, and uh, the technology itself is a very is, is conventional biogas uh, fermentation process. And what they have done is uh, upgrade the because you have biogas basically con contains uh, methane and uh, CO2, so it's uh, you use uh, it's a captured technology basically, but it uh, take out the CO2 and upgrade to the biogas to be. Uh, basically like a natural gas. And that has been um, compressed, put into the storage. We have a little bit of bare gas pipeline in the region. That means the pipeline can be shaped and then put into storage as the filling station. That has been built. And then it's uh, based on that, and then you have the transport which can be used for filling the bus and the car. There's a car has been developed for the bare gas car. It's uh, available. So that's the whole system how it works. And if you have, a, I'm not sure if you have a other question, <laughs> I could answer Just it. Just to follow up, uh, is there a lot of cleaning up to do for the biogas before you can put it into the vehicles that are running on them? Uh, I, th I don't think it's, it seems that we don't have the very uh, any problem right now for the. It's only right now we're working with the wet craft because it's uh, for the fermentation process. They have. A, because this is uh, too much liquid, because all the bare gas, there are some dry uh, digester is, uh, is uh, one topic, is dry, but dry is not very dry. You have to recycle off a lot of uh, liquid, and that's, uh, you recycle a lot of, and then it means you contain a lot of elements which they don't like it in the fermentation process. We use membrane uh, to try to get rid of, so this is the one. But the others, I haven't heard uh, and they they have a problem for like upgrade to the bare gas and then use it for the like compressing storage and filling. That has been, uh, I, I don't know detailed how this technical uh, details, but uh, if you I can, I can try to find uh, some information. And also we have a so-called bare gas association, it's a, a national bare gas association which is located in the south of uh, Sweden. So the CEO is a very good friend of mine. I think he, he should able to have some more detail about those information if you're interested. Please contact me, I, I can try to. 
Uh, hi, I'm Samuel, a second year in mechanical engineering, and I also work in Alpha Biofuels. I just uh, ask a more general question. This is in recent years, there's been a concept of uh, decentralizing power generation that is using microgrid and stuff. Like that. In fact, uh, yesterday itself, there's a uh, news or EMA announcing some prototypes or how to meet up electricity and do probably energy trading in the near future. Mm -hmm. So uh, when we look at this kind of micro generation, possibly due to technology improvement, we are having better micro gas turbine, uh, probably integrate solar panels into buildings or even using architecture to funnel wind such that they use wind turbine efficiently. So how do you think that decentralization is the way to go for energy in the future? And if you think so, how would bioenergy fit in mm -mm. into this, this concept of decentralized generation? And if not, why not? Because uh, currently, or in, even in the past, it used to be the bigger the better. That means the bigger the power plants by right. the whole country, the more efficient it is. But now we are looking at things from a different angle, that's the yeah. power from the people itself. Yeah. All right, thank you. Yeah, the, the, I'm already working with the... Uh, gas surfing is my business, <laughs> really. I have been working, I didn't talk anything about it. It's really, we have been working a lot with the... Uh, gas turbine and this is uh, my own uh, really my research area and uh, we start working with more systems. Micro turbine has been very hot during the if you look at the gas turbine business that's uh, you know this uh, uh, this American company it, it, they, they were very popular like five years ago and then it start to go down a little bit that's the micro turbine and uh, the reason because uh, I think a few reasons first about deregulation issues and uh, they have the first like bigger the better and then start to talking about uh, IT similar like PC become uh, make same similar example and uh, smaller beautiful and uh, then it's uh, for the but po for the power generation it's a little bit complicated because uh, we already have the infrastructure that's why distributing the system how you play the rule in the current energy system I didn't say they are not good, but uh, the reason because we, we, when we implement, we have to consider what existing system. I would say the distributed system might be for a developing country, which they don't have access to the grid. But when they have a grid, and you should rather than consider integrate into the system, because why you, you have the uh, electric grid, why you don't use the grid, and rather than you do the, your own system. The, for a few reasons, because why is the micro it uh, might be why it get very popular because uh, for the investor they can quickly invest and get electricity and they can sell and that's why it's beginning very attractive but later they find it's not so, such easy because the energy system is quite uh, uh, you cannot store energy basically and uh, then it's how to manage it for the small and connect to the trading then you have to have grid and without grid isolated system you there because it Trading is, a, you have to go outside the system. Without system, there are no trading. That's why, so for tra basically trading is a Nordic trading, Nordic power is a very successful example for electricity trading. But that's a, a distributed system has no rule play with uh, electricity trading. And then again, for the, usually small system is still low efficient. And they, we were discussing a lot of like household before with like, you have a micro turbine, you put like a, it's like a disk machine and you just put it into your house and it looks, the uh, concept is uh, really very good. But you will in the real practice and how to you, what kind of fuel you have. Efficiency usually lower and the investment cost is higher for, ke for kilowatt. Uh, for example, micro turbine is cost you uh, roughly more than uh, 10,000 US dollar. You really like 15 or even 20 US dollar for the micro turbine. Talking about 13 kilowatt and micro turbine for example. And the larger gas turbine is cost you five hundred you start per kilowatt. So there's a larger difference, who is going to pay for that? And then it's talking a lot about uh, for the electricity reduction uh, for the because grid and uh, but the, the reason is because you compete with the existing infrastructure already built. That's why I feel the future distributed system might be plays a very important role for those they don't have a grid and like a PV system, even it's more expensive, but you, you don't have a grid, you don't have a structure, and it can be quickly uh, installed. But if you look at the, the system, larger system already have the infrastructure built and with the grid, it might be 
uh, I don't see the micro turbine or micro distributed system will play very important role for such a kind of system. Thank you very much. Well, I hope I answer your question. I'm Elspeth Thompson from ESI. I'm intrigued by the use of pellets to heat homes. I grew up on the west coast of Canada in the 1960s. It was a city, it was a typical urban subdivision, and uh, in the winter many people would burn driftwood from the nearby beach to keep their homes warm. And uh, sometimes in the evening the air would be so thick with smoke it would burn your eyes and your nose. And when you went to bed, you'd actually have to shut your window <laughs> because the smoke was blowing in. Yeah, right. the, the homes were, were low, and so the chimneys were low, and so the smoke was lingering at, uh, you know, at low level, and, and there were heavy clouds, I suppose, as well, sort of pushing it down. I'm wondering about these pellets, if there's any smell or residue that uh, lingers inside the home and in the neighborhood where they're used. Yeah, it's a very, very good question. It's, uh, uh, there are a lot of study actually. In we have uh, Sweden has uh, developed the world first uh, uh, technology standard for the pellets, which has been adopted to the uh, European standard. Right now, they are working with the international standard for the pellets. Uh, we call the uh, another f another another name. It's a more academic name for the uh, for the pellet. This is including combustion efficiency and uh, and the particle it, it's a, that's a, uh, <coughs> the good thing is like in such a technology it's not a simple like if I have a fireplace it's a simple combustion but the the pellets heating system has been developed with a quite efficient uh, combustion process uh, that means they, we really look at the there are lots of studies have been made look at the what kind of particle emissions they do have little bit higher emission compared to oil and in, in terms of particles. But those has been really a lot of development has been made which is uh, I think they meet the standard for the emission. And then it's uh, NOx is another issue which has been a lot of work has been done. And SOX uh, basically is because the biomass is so very it, it, it's uh, the face stock is there very low sulfur content. That's not not uh, issue at all. So the ba uh, mainly the issue is the CO and particles, and which has been controlled. We we can, I think, meet the standard which uh, accepted. And then it's the Swedish uh, environment <coughs> emission standard is uh, is uh, is, uh, is very restrict. If it's a much uh, higher standard than the, the common U European standard, so. Th I think you know, I have uh, some data for the regarding those, but it's a, uh, it's not a very major issue now. Are there any other questions? Anybody? No. Well, uh, if you do not have any more questions, I would like to invite you to put your hands together and join me to thank Professor Young. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. If you have any questions, um, anything that you forgot to ask or something, please do send us an email uh, at ESI and uh, we will transmit that, uh, all your questions to Professor Yan. And uh, while he's traveling, I'm told that he's been always without uh, fail answering questions yes, and emails sir. using his computer. Yeah. Right. Okay, thank you very much for being here and look forward to seeing you. Thank you very much. Thank you.